it's February, and in America that means it's Black History Month. So we're going to be taking a look at the contributions of both modern and historical Black American bartenders to the world of cocktail craft. Today that means we'll be taking a look at the cocktail bandits of Charleston, South Carolina on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, how the ho there, my name is Michael. Welcome back to Mike's Hard Reviews. It is lovely to have you all here today. I'm a bartender and mixologist from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and yes, today we'll be talking about the cocktail blog, The Cocktail Bandits, more formally known as the duo Tanika Reeves and Johnny Caldwell. Now, you may know them for a lot of their modern work in the uh, city of Charleston, as well as a recently published book, but you may not know how the Cocktail Bandits came to be and what they're known for doing. So, let's take a step back to the years prior and talk about how the Cocktail Bandits came to be. You see, the members of the Cocktail Bandits, Tinika Reeves and Johnny Caldwell, met while studying political science at the College of Charleston in South Carolina, and the two of them became fast friends, enjoying a lot of the traditional idea of what college kids do. I mean, going from restaurant to restaurant, dive bar to dive bar, dance club to dance club, enjoying themselves and taking in the world around them that was Charleston and all of the culture it had to offer. Now, despite that, the two of them being black women did recognize that there was a pretty considerable, a considerable amount of homogeny and a lack of racial diversity in Charleston, being only a handful of black women to be doing the things they were doing. But despite that, they embraced it and saw it as an opportunity to engage with the Charleston culture of Charleston uh, in a way that most people could not. The two of them complete their undergrad studies, and while Johnny would go on to study uh, in, I believe, intellectual property law uh, in a master's program at the uh, College of Charleston, uh, Tinika would actually re-enter the workforce, and more specifically in the world of the beverage industry. Now, Tinika had never worked in uh, the customer service in that way before. She had never been a bartender before, uh, working instead retail and other customer service jobs. But when she does get into the world of bartending, starting off in dive bars in the Charleston area, she does take very, very naturally to it, and the experience she gains there offers her the opportunity to work special events and high-volume bars and bounce around, establishing her craft and growing her skill set. While Tanika is doing this, Johnny does come to visit her at the bar she is working at, and on the fly, she's making all these different cocktails that Johnny is getting to enjoy and give feedback to so that Tanika can build up her presence as a bartender. This becomes the catalyst for the, uh, the formation of the cocktail bandits. The beverage industry becomes a thing that Tanika and Johnny can both enjoy, and something that they want to take part in, especially because people are seeing the two of them sort of work off of each other uh, at these bars and they want to see what Tanika is creating. So it becomes a natural association to the two of them begin to lean into working into beverage craft. After Johnny finishes her postgraduate studies, uh, she's having a hard time finding work in the legal world. So rather than diving directly into that, she forms a business known as the Movers and Shakers Mix, which is a company that focused on local entrepreneurs having a, a quarterly opportunity to network with one another and attempt to meet between companies and form relationships and get hired. The Movers and Shakers Mix is a cocktail mix, and it caters mostly to minority groups at the time, giving them a place where they can coordinate with one another and collaborate on their respective businesses. The Movers and Shakers mix actually becomes its own beast entirely. It becomes a major cocktail event because each event is sponsored by like a signature cocktail that is themed around what these mixes are trying to accomplish. And as time goes on and the mix becomes more and more popular, eventually both local and household names begin to sponsor the cocktails shown at the mix and the beverage industry opens up to both Johnny and Tanika at this point because they're getting to work with some really big names that exist in the industry. Because of the popularity that was established with the Movers and Shakers mix, Tanika and Johnny decide, well, we're to get into this beverage industry thing and we're going to go into it hard. They form their trademarked blog, The Cocktail Bandits, on Instagram at this time and begin to dive into the beverage industry in whatever way they can to learn as much as possible and become authoritative figures in the industry. A lot of the education that they put themselves through in order to become these prominent members uh, is done through the U.S. Bartending Guild, who hosts events about cocktails and mixology, and both Tanika and Johnny would visit these events as frequently as possible and then use that as the basis for how they interact with the world of 
cocktails, and mixology. To further share this and allow the blog to have a lifeblood and a consistent degree of uh, content production, they actually form an agreement with the Charleston Chronicle, which is a black newspaper in Charleston. In fact, the only one that existed at least at the time. And they start to write a weekly entertainment blog uh, about their experiences in Charleston and providing cocktail recipes that are inspired by them, which is a super cool thing to do. I love the idea of taking an event that's local to you and like distilling it down quite literally, I guess, uh, into, uh, an, a, into an alcoholic beverage. I think it's a really fun idea. Eventually, as this work continues to grow and the, the blog maintains a presence uh, in various publications, both online and in Charleston newspapers, uh, the Charleston City newspaper, the widest, largest paper uh, in the city, does pick up on the work that they're doing and does a feature on them uh, for their mixological work. And from there, the cocktail bandits blow up. The Charleston City Papers feature on, the, on them gives Tanika and Johnny this platform from which they can expand their audience. And it's not just maintaining a nice local sphere, but now blowing up across the nation. So much so that in 2015, they were asked to curate an item for the Atlanta Food and Wine uh, Festival. And from there on, it's just a constant stream of growth. The bandits go on to work events both internationally and nationally across the United States. They are consulted for menus. They maintain their blog to this day on Instagram, uh, talking about mixology and uh, how culture influences it and continuing to present themselves as this very cohesive, modern, uh, sort of information processing house where they are developing an understanding of mixology in a modern context, post-cocktail renaissance, where we're thinking, okay, let's take these, these things we know work and let's make them even more interesting and present them in modern, approachable ways that are entertaining and still educational. The cocktail blog success eventually leads to 2017, where the cocktail bandits are approached to publish a book, which they do. The same year, a couple months after being approached to do this, they released the book, Holy Spirits, uh, Charleston Culture Through Cocktails, uh, which as it turns out is actually the first uh, book, the cocktail book to be published by uh, black women in the United States, which stunned me. I didn't think that would be such a recent thing, but it is. And the book is not only widely successful, but incredibly unique, containing 50 plus unique recipes based on various portions of culture, both in Charleston and worldwide, and continuing to show how the bandits have an understanding of spirits that is oftentimes found to be lacking in places. In short, the Cocktail Bandits are a modern example of how the investment in the beverage industry can be not just professional. You are not just bartenders. You are not just porters or people pouring beer. You can be a historian in the modern sense and contribute to the active writing of mixological history in the modern day. So Tanika and Johnny, thank you for your incredible work in this field, bringing it about in a way that proves that you can maintain a positive culture with cocktails by simply putting in the work. Thank you. <laughs> That's the Cocktail Bandits in short, a cocktail blog that has grown in massive popularity using culture as an influence for their cocktails. And uh, thanks to a posting on the American Urban Radio Network's website, I actually have one of their cocktails that we are going to make right now. The cocktail that the uh, AURN uh, positive was called a Raging Charleston, which is sort of a variation on a Tom Collins, I suppose, um, as closely as I can consider it one. It's very unique. It's got a, an interesting balance of ingredients that I think is going to be really fascinating. But before we get into actually making it, I do have to tell you about a couple of substitutions I need to make. The Raging Charleston features two ingredients that I was not able to source here in Michigan for one reason or another. Uh, the first of which is Grand Marnier Raspberry Peach, which I imagine is an orange liqueur also flavored with raspberry and peach. I could not find this for the life of me. Uh, large scale stores didn't have it. My local specialty shop didn't have it. Um, I'm assuming that the Michigan State Commissary just does not provide it. So I have instead made an approximation. Uh, in this bottle here is a blend of Cointreau, Chambord, raspberry liqueur, and peach schnapps. It's effectively taking all of the flavors that would have appeared in that single Grand Marnier product and packaging them into a house-made equivalent. Um, I'm hoping this will be similar. It will not have a cognac base like the, uh, like the Grand Marnier would, but the flavors will be similar, and I think that, based on what I was smelling, this is going to be a pretty close 
uh, comparison. Additionally, the Raging Charles then also calls for Tippelman's Falernum Syrup. Now, Falernum is a widely used ingredient in the world of tiki, but it's not one that appears in a, a lot of modern mixology, at least not that I'm familiar with. And the problem is that I actually could not find that specific syrup or a similar falernum syrup anywhere nearby, and I don't know how that's possible, but I couldn't. What I could find, though, was a bottle of John D. Taylor's Velvet Falernum Liqueur, which is essentially the same thing, but produced as a liqueur rather than a uh, syrup. So this is going to give us a slightly higher proof, but will accomplish the same sort of flavors and the same kind of essence and keep the cocktail from kind of falling flat by simply missing one of its ingredients. So without further ado, let's go ahead and make a Raging Charleston. We're going to start with one ounce of gin, half of an ounce of our liqueurs blend, half of an ounce of velvet falernum, and some orange juice. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fucking exploded. <laughs> one ounce of freshly squeezed orange juice. That's all of our ingredients, so let's go ahead and grab some ice. As always, we'll be sticking to our one whole cube and one cube cracked ethos. We will cap that up, tap that down, and give it a shake for 10 to 12 seconds to chill and dilute. For serving, I'm gonna grab a chilled Collins glass out of my freezer. And this is a lengthened cocktail, so we need to grab some tonic water. I'm gonna take this and just pour a small amount into the bottom of the glass to start our effervescence. We will uncap our shaker and double strain that over the soda. We're going to come behind that with some smaller ice to fill up the glass. Top that up with some remaining soda. And now we'll talk about garnishing. To garnish this, we're going to take an orange. I'm going to cut this pole to pole. We get ourselves a nice little half wedge of orange here. Rest that down alongside our ice like so. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a Raging Charleston. Alrighty, with our station cleaned up, let's go ahead and give our Raging Charleston a gentle stir, and then a taste. Cheers. Ooh. Ooh, that's love. <laughs> Whoa, that's cool. It's not like a traditional Collins, which has a lot of sharpness to it, uh, because there's lemon usually involved, or sometimes lime, and that kind of heavy acidity is what carries the drink through um, with a sort of life and evolution. Because we're using orange juice as our citrus base here, it does not have that, but it does have a good amount of naturally occurring sweetness, and apparently my oranges are pretty good, because I can really taste it coming through. And rather than that citrus component being the thing that carries and moderates and gives the drink evolution, the tonic water we've used to lengthen this is giving it this nice, bright, and sharp bitterness that sort of acts in the same place to give all of these flavors a moderating, balancing feature to sort of, I guess for lack of a better word, bounce off of and, and, and make interesting. This is, Super, super good. <laughs> it opens up mostly on the fruit from that liqueur blend. It's a very strong combination of flavors. The raspberry sort of leads it, and unlike how Chambord normally reads, like this very, very rich, dense blackberry, it is actually a lot more light and approachable and more like raspberry flavoring, but still not being so sweet that it is artificially so. The orange and the peach are also there. The peach is a little bit subdued, actually. Um, it's it's sort of acting as an accentu accentuating flavor to the other fruit combos here. From there, that liqueur blend sort of mellows and smooths out and then gets brought in with these gin botanicals that come in behind it, this kind of sharp juniperiness. Around the same time, you get hit with this tonic bitterness, this quinine uh, sort of very rooty, flat bitterness. And that in combination with the effervescence of the soda and the lengthening of the orange juice, which is giving it this nice little bit of extra sweetness it needs to stand up to that. The flavors kind of come together in what I would describe as an adult Starburst. That's not to be diminutive. I fucking love Starbursts. But that's what it kind of reads like. It's like a Starburst that has more than one flavor in it. And if it wasn't so ridiculously sickly sweet. Like this is incredibly well balanced, 
without having ha need you know, having the need to use something that is very acidic to do so, which is impressive because that can be very difficult to do. What's really cool too is that that falernum is really really giving this a lot of bass notes that complement that tonic perfectly. The the rum the rum base of the falernum is very apparent and the fruits bounce off that very nicely. There's a spice element to it that is sort of giving that extra body and, and a sort of secondary dimension to work with. But that is a phenomenal cocktail. Rich and fruity, not overpoweringly sweet, dynamic with that effervescent tonic. Beautifully well done. Beautifully done, Tanika and Johnny. Fantastic job. Thank you so much for providing this to us. I really appreciate it. You can actually go uh, visit the contact, uh, Cocktail Bandits. They have uh, an office where they operate out of as a sort of um, base for the blog and the work that they do uh, with events both nationally and internationally. Um, I'll put links to everything down in the description down below. So please do go give Tanika and Johnny a shout out and check them out and see what they're doing because they're doing some really great stuff and they deserve your attention. It just, they just deserve your attention. There's nothing else to it. Why aren't you paying attention to them? What are you watching me for right now? Go, go check out the band. That's all I have for you guys today. So let's go ahead and do a reading from our book, Crisp Toasts. We left off in the section on adversity, which is actually turning out to be remarkably long. And our next toast goes as such. May the sunshine of comfort shine through the gloom of despair. Cheers. I think that's quite fitting. It's like a sun, this is like sunshine in a glass. Man, that is rich and potent and just so well balanced. I, I, wow. <laughs> I love it when a cocktail can, can, can just impress me so well that like I'll be talking about something else and it stops me so I can appreciate it. I, oh man, that's really, really good. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Mike's Harder Heroes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you can always like and subscribe, but there are always other times to do that. I would much rather you guys take a look at the links in the description down below to read up on the history of the bandits and how they came to be, what they're doing now, and follow them on their Instagram blog uh, because that's what we're doing here. Fuck me, go check out the cocktail bandits, please. I have socials, ignore them. Go to the other links in the description first. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, I hope you did. Be sure to drink responsibly and never regret rest of your day. Bye-bye.